Welcome, listener. You've stumbled upon the unexpected podcast. Whether you're meant to be here or not, you might want to prepare yourself for a world of stories you won't hear anywhere else. They are, after all, quite unexpected. True. An integral part of the human experience. It's what connects people with one another. True is the very foundation of relationships between friends, families, and lovers. It is no exaggeration to say the world would burn in flames for all of eternity without true. Dare. Society has only progressed on the backs of those who have taken risks. Ones that often come at the expense of their own lives. Together, they make quite the delicious and deadly cocktail. Sometimes the decision between truth or dare is one that comes with unknowable consequences that could lead to a future filled with jealousy, betrayal, and perhaps murder. I bring to you now the delightfully deranged tale of truth or dare or death. Why aren't you guys scared? You told that exact same story last year. Yeah, but last time, he used a chainsaw. Yeah, and the time before that, you said he used a turkey baster. Oh, uh, hmm. So, who's up for some truth or dare? No! No. Come on, guys, you knew we were going to have to do it at some point tonight. Besides, don't you remember how much fun we always have? Yeah, I remember. I remember four years ago, to be quite frank. When you made me run naked through the Casey's gas station. Yeah, so what? It was super funny. <laughs> right, guys? No, man. No. Need I remind you? I got arrested and spent three months in jail, and now I'm a registered sex offender. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to keep telling us about that. We were in the courtroom with you, remember? Ugh, get over it. How about this time we promise no one will have to leave the house? I don't know, Greg. It's, it's getting kind of late. I think I'm just going to turn in. Come on, Mike. We play this game every year, and it's only 10.30. Yeah, I know, but you guys know the drill. I got things to do tomorrow. And to be perfectly honest, I'm really just not feeling this game anymore. I mean, come on, don't you think we're getting too old for this? I really, really didn't want to have to invoke this, but we pinky swore, along with Tim, that we'd get together once a year, catch up, and just maybe play some games like we did in high school. Sure, some people might think it's weird, but... We all agreed it was more important than ever to stay true to our promise, especially once Tim... Listen, man, just stop bringing up Tim's disappearance, okay? No, Mike, he's right. We all said we'd keep our promise to Tim. If he was still around, he'd want us to play. He is around, man. He's out there somewhere. I just know it. No, he's dead, okay? Got it, Greg? It's time to get it through your skull and accept reality. People don't just disappear for ten years and suddenly turn up, all right? And if he really is dead, it's likely he's been buried somewhere. Perhaps out by Dongaroo's Creek. Probably in a shallow grave, like three or four feet deep. Maybe with a rock on top for a headstone marking his grave. But I suppose you're right the more I think about it. And maybe that's why I'm having such a hard time with this. You see, I was going to wait till morning to tell you guys, but this is the last time I'm going to be able to come to these get-togethers. What? Yeah, I mean... You all know I have two kids and run a Fortune 500 company. I have to fly back and take my boys to hockey camp. Maybe one year when things aren't so busy for me, we could just stay at my cabin in California. Come on, we'd each have our own rooms and and not have to sleep in your basement using these ratty old sleeping bags. But it's tradition. Come on. We all know it was Tim's favorite game. It's what led him to getting the guts to ask Whitney Nolan to prom. This is what he would have wanted for us. Is it? 
I guess you won't ever know because Tim never got to be a real adult. He never had his wife Brenda leave him for that banking CEO, Philip Clare. He never had to take care of his kids by himself like I do. Times are tough, man. And I know you're happy working at Casey's and sitting around playing video games and eating Cheetos all night. But some of us have real responsibilities and a real life to get back to. My, come on, that was low. I, I'm sorry. You're right, Cal. I, I'm just really stressed. I'm about to lose half my money with the divorce, which means I'm going to have to lay off hundreds of people. And then what? Just close up shop? And keep in mind, my dad, he jumped off a bridge in front of a speeding locomotive after his business went under when I was only 15. And I'm scared that kind of thing runs in my family. It's okay, Mike. Life can get tough, man. And to be fair, none of us are living the life we pictured when we graduated. I, I mean, Cal... You guaranteed you'd be in a hot rock and roll band and land on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine by the time you were 25. And now, you're a dental assistant living with two poodles. Ha! Yeah, I guess so. Actually, I was going to tell you guys this later tonight, but I finally finished school. And now, I run my own practice in Alabama, where I picked up this charming accent. I, I know, I know, it's less glamorous than selling out arenas, that's for sure. But I've worked real hard for this. And I'm proud of myself. Overall, I'm happy with how things have turned out. And besides, Randy, didn't you think you'd be President of the United States and that you'd make polygamy legal nationwide? Yeah, I guess that was kind of silly, wasn't it? But things turned out fine for me, too. Sure, I can't legally be within 500 feet of a Casey's, but losing my job, it kind of helped me find my true passion in life. Drawing images based off erotic Lego fan fiction. Every year, I've somehow made more money than the last. <laughs> yeah, everything sure has worked out well for all of us. Yeah, it, uh, it sure has. But you know what? Let's not talk about boring adult stuff tonight. We can all agree that we've each changed quite a bit. So let's just have an old-fashioned night of fun. Come on, let's play one more round. One last round of Truth or Dare. What do you say, Mike? Yeah, come on, Mike. Well... I... I... Ah, heck, I give up. Why not? Yay! All right, all right. Well then, uh, for old time's sake, and for Tim's, let's just, let's hop right into it. I'll kick things off. Hmm, let's see. We'll go with the uh, Cal. Yes, Greg? Truth or dare? Oh, gee, let's, uh, let's go truth. All right. Let's see. Oh, I got one. How many times did you picture Mrs. Langishmit naked in class? Oh, sick. Wasn't she like 70 when we had her? Yeah, that's just wrong, dude. And she kicked the bucket a couple weeks ago, too. So, you didn't answer the question. How many times? Oh, God, no. Well, maybe like 20. Maybe. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Uh, Randy. Yeah, what's up? Truth? Oh, damn. I think I'll also take truth. Okay, okay. Um, oh, what was the absolute worst moment of your entire life? Wow, that's kind of heavy, man. But, let's see. I, I gotta go with the time I found out my grandma had a rare disease. I had to take care of her for seven months, you guys. Since her kids weren't even in the state, it was all up to me. I gave up my job to live with her, and to make sure her exit from this world would be a peaceful one. And, I guess surrounded by at least one loved one. Months went on, and uh, eventually she forgot who I was. It hurt me deeply, because we'd always been so close. But the worst of it all was her last day. I remember it in vivid detail, just like it was yesterday. I went up to her, and I held her trembling hand... She looked me right in the eye, and she said, Boring! Hey, come on! Ah, Greg is right. You were taken all day, man. I really just meant the worst moment of high school. You're right. I'm sorry. Let me go. I'll show you how it's done. Hold up, man. It's my turn. All right, go ahead. I had a good one, but... Oh, really? You guys want to play this game so bad? Fine. Because I don't think you can top this. I've got the ultimate dare. If any of you babies are up for taking it on. Let's just say that Mindy Maxwell used to call me quite a daredevil in high school. 
Need I explain more? Come on, give me the dare. Be careful what you wish for, Greg. Because tonight, I'm daring you to kill someone. Mac, that's too far. Yeah, that's not funny. After all we've been through with Tim? I wasn't talking to either of you, was I? Greg, I dare you to kill someone tonight. I, I, I know what you said. I I just... That's it. I'm not having any part of this. I'm going to bed. Yeah, me too. Hey, you guys all just agreed this would be our last night of getting together in honor of Tim. Just to recap, we started doing this whole thing ten years ago, in our senior year of high school, because we were all best friends. We said we'd continue doing it each year at this time for as long as we humanly could. And when Tim went missing... Well, that was just the icing on the cake. We knew we couldn't go a single year without getting together, playing some games, just taking our mind off of things. And tonight, Mike let you all know this was his last year he plans on playing these silly games so he can take care of his kids because his wife left him, and it's possible, it's possible, he may even lose his wildly successful business, which worries him because his own father jumped in front of a speeding train after losing his job when Mike was only 15. Uh, 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 right. We literally just went over that the past five minutes. And why did you refer to yourself in the third person multiple times at the end of your story? Did I? Weird. Well, that's neither here nor there. The main thing is, I think it's time for everything to come to a close. And that's why I think we should go out with a bang. Don't you think? At the end of the day, it's what Tim would have wanted. Right, Greg? Dare or no dare, I'm just not comfortable with killing someone, especially one of my friends. I agree with Cal and Randy. This has gone too far. Maybe, maybe this really should be our last year. Yeah, last year. Last year indeed. Well, guys, I am not going to lie. I'm, I'm pretty tired. Sweet dreams, everyone. Uh, good night, Mac. Uh, see you guys for pancakes tomorrow. The Unexpected Storytelling Podcast will return after a short word from our sponsors. Have you been in an auto accident? Has your job put your health in jeopardy? Did you get crushed during the Black Friday sale at Circuit City? Was someone you love brutally murdered by the owner of a mobile home dealership? Hi, we're the offices of Tony, Tony, and Murplestern, and we're here to get you the settlement you deserve. I'm Dick Tony. I'm Mick Tony. And I'm Doug Murplestern. Don't bother with other money-hungry law offices who only want your money. Here at Tony, Tony, and Murplestern, we put our money where our mouth is, in our wallets, with our other money, because we're not afraid to go to work for you. Give us a call at 1-900-909-9900. That's 1-900-90-TRUE. We're not afraid to ask the tough questions. We now return you to your tale here on the Unexpected Podcast. <sighs> oh, man. I drank too much soda. Oh, ooh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Ow! Ah, God, I just ran into a desk. Oh, where's that lamp? Ah, oh, there it is. What the? Uh, hey, where's Cal and Randy? It's only me and Greg in this room. Hey, hey, Greg, wake up. Uh, uh, oh. Greg, this is serious. Get up. What? 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 What's going on, Mike? I was having a dream about Mrs. Langenschmidt. I was in detention with her, and I'll tell you about it in the morning. Why'd you wake me up? Where's Cal and Randy? Huh? I, I don't know. Maybe outside having a smoke. Neither of those guys smoke, Greg. Well, maybe they went to the gas station to get some hot dogs or something. How should I know? You know Randy is banned from the Casey's gas station. Aren't you worried? This is just strange. Look, their cell phones are right here. They wouldn't have left without them. I'm tired, okay? And I'm grumpy when I don't get enough sleep. Greg, just be straight with me. Did... Did you take me up on my dare and kill one, 
or both of them in their sleep and then bury their bodies out by Dongarood Creek next to Tim? If, if, if that's where he is, that is. Mike, have you gone bananas? Those are my best friends. You know what? No. No, I didn't. Is that good enough for you? Now go to bed, get some sleep, and we'll, we'll all look back and laugh at this over pancakes in the morning. <sighs> all right. Fine. Uh, 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 now what time is it? It's so dark still. I'll just turn on the flashlight on my phone right here. Hey, Randy and Cal are still gone. <gasps> and so is Greg. Where is everyone? Oh no. Now that I take a closer look at this sleeping bag, there's uh, some sort of weird substance here. Oh my god. I think it's blood. Mike should go find the guys. I mean, I should go find the guys before it's too late. I'll check the kitchen first. Maybe they're just having a midnight snack. Hey, Randy? Cal? Greg? Are you guys there? Weird. The kitchen is empty. Is that... Is that more blood on the handle of the fridge? Oh, jeez. It is. I'm afraid to open this door. Who knows what could be inside? It looks empty. Just some milk, cheese, and a couple of jars of unopened mustard. And one more thing is in there. What is that? Oh, crap. It's Randy's class ring he always wore. It meant so much to him. Now it's covered in blood. I better grab one of these kitchen knives right here in case I run into the killer. Where are these guys? Maybe I should just call the cops. <gasps> That's the TV! I gotta check the living room. Are you guys there? Who turned this on? Oh no, more blood on the TV. Wait. Wait, there's an image starting to form on the screen. It's Cal! Hey, this looks like the video of the trip to Italy he showed us tonight. Wow, I can't believe I finally got to Italy. It's so beautiful here. I can't wait to have a slice of pizza. <laughs> oh, and Mike, if you're watching this, you know who killed me. What? That's not possible. How is he talking to me right now? I'm dead, Mike, and it's all up to you to avenge me. Cal, tell me. Tell me who did this to you. Who are you talking to, Mike? Greg! It's you. What did you do to Cal and Randy? Mike, come on. What are you talking about? I've been down here searching for him, too. Stop it. I know it was you. I found the class ring in the fridge and the tape of Cal's vacation, all of it covered in blood. I should have known not to dare you, of all people, to kill them. After all, this wouldn't be the first time, would it? What? What does that mean? Tim, Greg. I'm talking about Tim. Mike, come on, that's crazy talk. You know what we need to be doing? We need to be working together to find him. Yeah, so you can stab me in the spleen when I'm not looking. Mike, come on, I would never do that. Yeah? Then why are you holding a knife? Uh, I, I was just making a sandwich until I heard a noise. I, I guess I ran outside with it. Wait, why do you have a knife? Because there's a killer on the loose, and it's you! Mike, you're not making any sense. First of all, where's your proof? That's quite an accusation to be making of a dear old friend. Our friends are gone, and there's a bloody knife in your hand. Why, Greg? Why? I, I guess I must have cut myself while spreading some mustard. Is that so hard to believe? Yes, Greg. It is. Because those jars of mustard were unopened. And now you're going to spread me out for good. Ah, look, I don't know what that means. Just put the knife down and let's talk about this rationally. No, you put yours down first. You're scaring Mike. He thinks you're going to stab him next. But you're Mike. Oh, no. Don't tell me. Don't tell me, man. This is just like high school again. And that summer your mom put you in that institution. That's right. I know all about your secret. You said you spent that whole summer touring with your uncle in Cirque du Soleil after your dad died. But I know where you really were. You... You know about that? I do. And I'll tell everyone. Tell everyone what, Greg? 
that I'm crazy and I killed everyone? I bet that's exactly what you'll do. I bet you've been working on that cover story for years. Well, too bad I caught you. And too bad I'm going to put an end to your scheming right now. I did it. It's over. It's finally over. Tim and Cal and Randy, you can all rest in peace now. No. no, 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 no. We, we did, did it. it. What? That's right, 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 we, 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 you, you and me, and, me. and now, now I, I dare, dare you, you to kill, kill someone. Someone, someone, someone. What do you mean? There's nobody left in the house. Oh, oh but there, there is. is. One, one more one person. person. A person, a person you, may you may have forgotten about. about. Who? Mike. 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 What? But Mike is me. I'm Mike. Go, Go on, on, do it. Do it. Now. now. I, I'm trying to fight it, but I must. We must. Not so fast. What? Tim, it's you. But I thought I buried you in Dongarood Creek after stealing your new business idea, and then I put a rock on top of your grave. You thought you did, but I'm alive. And now I take on the ultimate dare to kill you. No! No! Ah, uh, Tim! Uh, Tim, no! Stop! Ah, come on, Tim. That was stupid. What? What do you mean? What's wrong with it, Pete? You just told a story about yourself and how you faked your death for ten years so you could come back to kill the guy who thought he killed you and buried you near a creek? Yeah? So what, Carl? Well, frankly, it makes no sense. You're just wasting an hour of our lives and I have to get up early and drive my kids to the hockey practice. I'm gonna be real tired in the morning. Oh, and I don't appreciate you clearly basing the Mike character after me. Yeah, Pete is right. I also resent the fact that you based a registered sex offender character off of me. And I don't paint erotic Lego fanfiction. I paint houses. Houses, Tim. Is this really why you asked us to get together for the first time in 10 years? You know what? At least I tried. I thought this would be a good way to bring us all together again. Close, like we were in the old days. Forget it. You just think you're so cool, Pete, because you own a computer repair store, and I work the weekend shift at Casey's. You really think you're better than me. You're right. I do. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, where's Cal? I mean, I mean, James. Yeah, where'd he go? I got one more twist for ya. Huh? That's right! While you three were telling dumb stories for the past hour, I was in the bathroom, crafting a bomb, and I strapped it to my chest! Because you guys were jerks to me in high school, and I've been waiting ten years for this exact moment! Oh my gosh, he really does have a bomb! James, don't press that button! And that, kids, is why bullying is wrong. Okay, class dismissed. All right, be careful. Don't spoinkle your doinkles. I just wanted to thank you for the lesson today, Mr. Langenschmidt. No problem. Bullying is a very important issue in today's times. The dangers need to be discussed more often, and I'm glad you took something from it. I'll never bully my friends again. Well, that's good to hear. Now run along. I'm sure you've got hockey practice to get to. Goodbye. Have a good night, Mike. <sighs> the school's empty and I'm alone again, just like every other night of the week. It's in these quiet moments where I can't help but be tortured by the thoughts of how things would have played out differently had I been nicer to my own loved ones. Ten years of marriage down the drain. Maybe Brenda and the kids would have stayed instead of leaving me with nothing but our dogs, Cal and Randy and our run-down house near Dongarood Creek. Had I been there for them, and not spent all my nights playing video games and eating Cheetos, maybe they would have taken me on that trip to Italy instead of going with Phil Clare, that hotshot with the fancy bank teller job. And maybe, just maybe, 
I wouldn't have to work weekends at Casey's to pay alimony and to stave off the ever-increasing loneliness. But this is the life I'm living. Maybe it's the one I was destined for all along. Some would simply call it fate. Either way, it doesn't matter. It's too late for me now, and there's only one way I can atone my sins and finally, finally make things right for everyone I've hurt in the past. By detonating this homemade bomb I strapped to my chest. A bomb that I've named... Tim. Like the stories you hear on The Unexpected? Consider sharing our show with family and friends, along with any strangers you come across. Provide a little something unexpected to someone else's day. You can find and subscribe to our show on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere else you stream your podcasts. We're on social media, on Unexpected Show on Twitter, and The Unexpected Podcast on Facebook. You can also find out what we're up to on our website, www.theunexpectedpodcast.com. Thank you for listening. Now let's get back to our bone-chilling tale. Well, that was quite the explosive ending, was it not? So many worlds within other worlds. Where does it end? Perhaps the one you're living in now is merely a game of truth or dare in some young child's devilish game. In fact, you may even be safer that way. For if you're not careful, you may awaken into a whole new world filled with horrifying tales of the unexpected variety. And these stories are so scary, so disturbing, that even the bravest of souls will be terrified right into the brink of madness. But for the truly brave, please come back soon. I dare you. <laughs> yes. The Unexpected Storytelling Podcast is written, produced, and directed by Andrew Socek and Eric Bergstrom. Each story is somehow a work of fiction, and with the exception of public figures like Tony Danza, any resemblance to persons living or dead is coincidental and unexpected.